Good morning, Mr. Pandey. Welcome Good to morning. Our, uh, Exchange for Media conversation on the business of media, business of news, uh, life post COVID, and uh, how the economy will come back and how the media industry will be a catalyst, how news channels will be a catalyst in helping the country deal with COVID. Uh, let me introduce Mr. Avinash Pandey to our viewers and our readers. Mr. Avinash Pandey is the CEO of the ABP News Network and has been an accomplished media professional for 25 years. Uh, he's been with ABP News from the day of inception. He's like a founding member of the ABP News Network team. Um, in his 26 years, he's worked with three news organizations. He started his career in 1995 with Indian Express, went on to Ashtak when Ashtak was launched, worked for less than five years for Ashtak, and this is his 16th year at uh, ABP News. So Mr. Pandey is a news television veteran. Uh, uh, the news television industry is 20 years old in this country and Mr. Pandey's worked last 20 years in the news uh, TV don domain, news broadcasting domain. So he understands news television and news broadcasting like nobody does. Welcome Mr. Pandey to this exchange Thank you. for media Thank you, conversation Anurag. with Vigas. Uh, Mr. Thank Pandey. You, Mr. Uh, Thank you Anurag. Thank you for him. Uh, Mr. Pandey, in the last 40 days, the viewership of news channels has gone up by 200, 300 percent, more than 200 percent across. I'm not just talking of your channel, but broadly, your channel has also done very well and continued to maintain its leadership. But uh, tell us, uh, why is this uh, surge in news? Why are people, everyone criticizes news for being negative. If news is so negative, why are people watching it? You know, I always tell this to uh, my team internally that um, more and more news consumption happens when you raise a family. When you get married, start raising the family. Because that's the time that you start getting worried about simple things of life. Your job, your investments, your social security, your children's education, and etc. Uh, COVID is such a time that everybody is concerned as to what's going on right now in the environment and obviously the authentic source of the news is not uh, the numerous forwards and the phds that comes on the on the whatsapp it's uh, it's uh, it's about the authentic source which are the news television uh, because you see it it is getting reported by the award winning reporters um, you have graphics which explains you as to what's going on and it's kind of reassurance that that helps you believe in a better future that even while what is going on is what is going on but there is a future which can be brighter than what we are today and that obvious curiosity leads to people to to watch news television and that's what we have seen our network has grown about 300 percent uh from pre-covid to post-covid uh and uh, we are seeing a double trend continuing, uh, more than 200% trend continuing even even now, uh, while things are a little bit uh, settling down. Uh, so yeah, it's a it's a reason of uncertainty that led to such high uh, viewership. So Mr. Pandey, you're right. You said that it's not a credible source of information. It's through bona fide journalists. You're watching what's happened on the screen. Um, right. You are you're in the line of fire. You are in some way first responders, the journalists right. that go out and actually do real stories about real issues. And I right. believe that, that the credibility of established uh, media brands like ABP and ABP right. News uh, would definitely be a source. Uh, tell me, Mr. Pandey, uh, while the viewership has grown, uh, the advertising logically should have grown. If the viewership has grown, uh, more and more advertisers should have flocked to news channels, to ABP News Network. The rates should have gone up at least double. But tell me what's happened on the business side, just to tell our viewers and industry professionals on how advertising has done in these 40 days. And how do you see news TV advertising in the next 60 to 90 days? Okay, so first thing is that, that the news is such a business that when the viewership is high, Either there are no ads or not many advertisers. For example, I'll start with, because you mentioned about my career since the time we started television. When 9-11 when happened, 
for 72 hours there was hardly any ad on television when 2611 happened for four or five days there was hardly any ad on television but the viewership was at its highest during the covid time it is it would be very difficult to assume that when everything all economic activities are stopped the consumption will happen because finally the advertising is for the consumption and hence despite such high viewership there are not many advertisers who choose right now to advertise having said that there are there are advertisers who think that advertising is not only for today but to build a viewership uh, to build a build an audience which is which is going to consume your product much later than than what is happening right now and hence people invest in brands uh, people invest in uh, communication uh, during the difficult time and those who do it i can tell you they come out stronger when when they see the other end you know sure. and uh, and that's why a lot of advertisers are still advertising despite the fact that their 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 establishments factories and shops are not open but yes it has gone down drastically and because uh, there are very few advertisers and there are many news channels they are all uh, uh, negotiating a bargain in the marketplace and hence the rates has not gone up the way we expected it to be right uh, for the news channel the cost of us doing the business has also gone up please remember none of our, none of our cost has gone down uh, so, whether it is uh, sending the reporters in the field uh, cost of uh, uplinking downlinking broadcast your obs your tv use your studio uh, in fact our risk our cost has gone up because we have to uh, make sure that our employees are much safer uh, and because they are putting their life online when they are going out and reporting and they are coming to office to produce programs you know, so sure. yeah. so you know at this point i want to ask you two questions i already started getting questions but you know news apart from being a business is also a public service you know your tagline is aapko rakhe aage right it's about putting the viewer first the citizen first the country first uh, and it, at abp news you you've been neutral objective fact based and uh, you have tried to report news as it is in in the last two weeks you did face a lot of pressure if i may use and uh, you know government whether the state governments or the central government uh, sometimes for the right reason sometimes for the wrong reason would not like certain news to go out or not get reported on areas where they don't look good so tell us how do you see news as a service and um, how have you dealt with pressure in the last 3 weeks 4 weeks and overall in your job see uh, first of all any business that you are in if your sole purpose is to make the profit then you are in a wrong job so sure. if you if the profit comes if your purpose is there to serve somebody somebody's need right. news channels are not no more different our purpose of existence is to tell people truth to remove the darkness of knowledge that people may have right and inform and educate and entertain them right that's the purpose that we exist because right. of this purpose audience come and consume our network uh, every week every single day and thus advertisers are also looking for those engaged audience they come and advertise on my network so uh, it's the, the primary purpose of the business is not only to make money obviously any business cannot survive if there is no money in it, it has to be right? sustainable but correct but money comes when you have your uh, your purpose very sharply defined that you are here to serve the community as to inform educate and entertain them if you are doing that then i think there is a pot of gold that is lying at the other end uh, and those people who do it honestly diligently week on week month on month year after year despite all the pressures that you are mentioning about our job is to report our job is not to uh, not to comment on not to give my opinion on how you should look at the news our job is to report what is happening and it's for other people to judge what is right or wrong secondly uh, no news organization should be treated as a pr department for the government 
of any any state center municipality or etc uh our job is to because it is in the interest of those government also that they should know that what's going on in the field in the marketplace in the society and that's what all credible news journalists and news organizations do and that's what we are doing obviously uh, uh everybody would like to hear only good news about themselves including you and me uh but the point is that that uh that if you report honestly and if you know that this is this is what is happening and we should take a take a cognizance of that the entire table moves up uh and and so you're saying uh, use the catalyst for positive action it's a catalyst absolutely. for making sure that the right things happen absolutely and i can give you numerous examples in which uh, we have done stories the government has come to know they have taken give action give us one or two examples yeah. no in fact uh, in fact a lot of uh, uh, you know uh, when when for example just now the latest news is that when the nanded saab uh, pilgrims came to uh, came to punjab we were the quick one to point out that look this is going to spread infection and yes. there are there you are did, they are being sent to all the, everyone you will possibly uh, the they will the spread way. infection because uh, they have been sent back home without being tested and based on our report uh when the government came to know uh because it's such a large machinery government can't know everything is going on they send their uh, team back uh took those people out from there sent them to quarantine center the tests were done and now it is coming out that over 200 people are infected so uh we have a responsibility and uh, and we have played our role uh i can tell you over uh, more than 75 hours of promo to prevent covid we have run on our own fantastic okay. and we must have made over 20 different kind of promos on our network in all this last 40 days which requires again huge investment from from the network side and we are fighting and, sa- and, and sacrificing advertising time and i know that advertising if you increase time, advertising yeah. sometimes your ship can go down because and you know it happens as you said rightly so yeah it's so we have a responsibility towards society uh, at the end of the day we exist because uh, uh, because there is a society which 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 is looking for something brighter and better so mr pa- mr pane i want to ask you uh, you know we when we personally talk and we meet pre covid times we haven't met after march 23 uh, but we talk about how the media in, industry has a crab mentality uh, the media owners the media leaders don't support each other uh, when it comes to taking a view on a story when one media organization reports the story right and comes uh, under fire for reporting it absolutely the right way uh, tell us in covid times has this changed have media organizations come together and understood that they are in this together and post covid how would you like Um, the media to come together and in some way rally with support. For example, uh, TRI has just come out with uh, recommendations for the bark. Uh, you know, uh, that's a way for government to, in some way, control ratings. Though the INB minister has today clarified that he doesn't he intends to uh, make sure that nothing this happens without consultation and in a hurry. Uh, and he will talk to TRI, and he can in his capacity as the INB minister. the point i'm trying to ask is how does the media leaders owners ceos uh, come across as a, as one unit for the right reasons uh, that is to safeguard uh, the interests of citizen and not take the pressure of the government or any special interest group whether it's a industry lobby whatever it is so okay i can tell you that, see uh, the news broadcast association which is the nodal body for uh, representing the news industry in india uh, has done lots of intervention in past 45 days uh, since the covid time has come we all talk almost every day uh, so for example we have written to the the inb minister uh, and the government of india that our uh, our uh, payment to the prasar bharti should be waived off for 3 months because we do not have money run right not to run the operations pay people salary and stay safe 
uh, we have come together and we was the first one to strongly criticize uh, the rest of AP Maja reporter. Uh, and by the way, I must tell you, the same report, which the government of India, the government of Maharashtra said is wrong. The same trend has started yesterday from the same place that we reported. And it is a southeastern railway, which on basis which we, we gave that report, started those trends. So we knew what we were doing, and that's why, as an NBA, NBA president, wrote a very strong letter to the Maharashtra government. Uh, uh, and we, we also informed the INB ministry that this is something this has happened with us. So, uh, in a lot of matter, we are. And the broadcast editors association also. Also, also okay, yes, exactly. A lot of my colleagues across uh, different channels, uh, uh, journalists, editors, CEOs, they came out on their own and then they, they, they called me up and they supported me through whatever means that is possible. So as far as uh, protecting the truth or protecting our right to have a free speech, we are all together. But please understand that at the end of the day for everyone, they have their own problems and their own uh, set of issues. Yeah, priorities priority. and issues, which everybody is fair in in that way to deal what to prioritize and what to what to do. So, as an industry body, uh, I have been on the board of IBF. I am on the board of NBA. And now we we don't push business agendas for different organizations. We say what is important for the industry is to protect the right of free speech and make sure that the adverse environment outside our organization does not hamper that flow of the free speech this is the limited area in which we all get together and uh, uh, that's why if you look at the news industry from where we started it in year 2000 to where it is today over 300 news channels uh, so many people are directly or indirectly employed in this the conscience of the nation has gone up uh, every single thing that you do anywhere gets reported uh, uh, and uh, and overall, I think democratic values in this country has become a stronger since the time the news channel have have uh, so many news organizations have come. So, so I'm quite happy with the level of cooperation that we all are having. I did not get your second question. Was uh, my second know. question was how do you deal with, let's say, you know, the you know what is the response to the TRI recommendations on Bob? Why uh, Bach has done a good job, and there may be areas where it needs to improve. And there are areas we know that it needs to improve. Uh, there is a new CEO in Sunil Lula, but uh, before that, Bach was very, dare I say, very opaque and very, you know, at the leadership level, not open to suggestions. I, but to get the government to control or interfere where the advertisers are happy, uh, where the stakeholders like yours may not be. Entirely happy with Bach, but that's something between you and Bach. Uh, should the government interfere in it? What's your view? See, my personal view is this: that government should be out of business. There should be uh, there should be uh, freedom of people to exercise their business and freedom of choice. Uh, however, at the same time, uh, we have seen this globally that when the regulator is weak, uh, the businesses have not improved. Uh, that's a global example I'm telling you through different case studies. However, uh, as far as Bach is concerned, uh, nobody will have any doubt that we have the most competent guy right now at the top, which is Sunil. Absolutely. Not only Bach, competent, even in his empathy for individual, how he engages in his responsiveness. Sunil Lula is possibly uh, outstanding. He's outstanding. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's why I'm saying that he's the most, he is the one of the most and competent he's person in the and industry. And he's ran television channels, both in news and in non-news. So he, he has been on site. So he, under, yeah. he's, he has been a broadcaster. He has been in advertising. He has, he's, he's in a statistic. So he and understands. As a person, he's so. very responsive. So, you know. He engages so nobody, ca yeah, nobody have has any doubt about the person at the top, the board, uh, very accomplished people, and it is see, it is not easy to run a system like that. You are uh, talking about money, if, so if you have to increase uh, the number of people meters, you need to increase outlays. 
at the end of the yeah, day it's it's a, it's a very difficult business to be in you know so uh, india is not not like america where the east coast to west coast people drink same cereals uh, people eat same cereals in the morning as a breakfast here uh, your neighbor has a very different choice than so it's not easy to measure in this country uh, it is up to the bark board and uh, and the industry stakeholder to to look at uh, the detail of uh, a tris recommendation we have not done so so far so we are unable to comment on this uh, uh, and so sooner or later the time will tell what uh, the problem is this that we should ask who went to the government and why and who, who do you think went to the government Mr. Bande, your audio has gone now. Your I, audio, I cannot hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. So, so who uh, went you know, to the you, I don't know. So I'm saying that you know. Uh, was it a disgruntled broadcaster who was not happy with the ratings of others, or a group of disgruntled broadcasters? I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think the so. The government, government, Mr. Bande, the government's line of thinking is when in COVID times you store stories, you meaning I talk of not just. And you know some of the stories are very right, should be shown. Some are frivolous. And when you ask news broadcasters why did you because we have to get ratings. You know, that's that's the currency. Like in politics, how many seats you win in in Lok Sabha determines who who runs the country. Similarly, so the government said, oh, if ratings is something that is causing this news, uh, let's control ratings and control uh, the rating system. So, what is your view on that? Though the INB minister today very categorically and emphatically said that he will, he did a meeting with the IBF uh, board members and the stakeholders yesterday, and he assured them that no such action would be taken, uh, and uh, you know proper consultation would be done, and he would talk to the TRI chief. But why do you think it happened? I mean. See, I'm unable to answer that because I don't know why this happened. Uh, I'm not in the bark board, uh, and and see, see, as Sunil said in some of the interview that I was saying that uh, people who don't get rating, they are usually. Yeah, the interview was an exchange for media.com, so yeah, 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 okay. uh, the only interview post the TRI order. It's an exchange yeah, for so media. people who don't get rating, they are unhappy, and that's that's very logical to be unhappy. But I don't think so. That's the reason that. Uh, the government will interfere or anybody. I, I don't think so. That's that's the case. Okay, let me ask the question. Uh, if you had to suggest to Bach to do things to improve, what would that be? See, the investment in RPD is very important. The worst path data because on the one hand, you have a complete ecosystem which exists right now where you get to see who is watching, how how what they are consuming, uh, what is their viewing pattern, and then absolute data comes to you through digital. On the other hand, you have extrapolation. So obviously, there is a uh, the technology has reached somewhere while we are still in a in a previous technology. Obviously, it will require investments, industry stakeholders agreeing to it. Uh, so it's it's a it, but in in that direction, I think we should move. Is the reverse part data where you get actual data of who is consuming what? And also, no manual intervention in it. There will be no tampering or etc. That that yeah. you will come to know. So. now. Let's focus a little bit from technical things. In your 15 plus years, not 16 year at ABP, tell us some milestones uh, that when you think about them, it makes your heart glow. You know, it makes you smile. They've been worthwhile in ABP news journey because you pretty much be around from the day it was started. So tell us a little bit milestone, one or two interesting stories uh, that uh, professionals from the industry would love and it would uh, kind of be interesting anecdotes. You know, one thing very good about our organization is that that uh, we the size of the market is not the only reason we do business. So, for example, when I still remember uh, in a, in late two thousand four, I was having a, a conversation with then CEO Uday Shankar uh, at Library Bar at Taj President, and he said. Uh, let's launch uh, uh, when the moment you join. Let's uh, start doing the work for launch of Bengali channel in Calcutta. Uh, and I said, uh, Is there so much of audience in India that we need to go into regional space that in Bengal, which is P3 market, and etc. etc. And he said, We'll create the market. 
So, and uh, so similarly, when we went in Maharashtra, uh, there was no uh, regional news channel market there. So we do not necessarily look at the market size. Even if you look at any pundit in, in news industry will tell you that being neutral is never an advantage. Reporting breaking news is no more an advantage because people are getting breaking news through, through their WhatsApp and Facebook and all that. But we do all the time that. You do a lot of investigative we, stories. We believe that uh, sharing the opinion is fine, but it should be limited to a slot where a couple of people can share their opinion who are who could be seen as an opinion maker. But finally, we believe in delivering facts and uh, that's what we stand for. So we don't necessarily go by uh, the standard market logic and which that is why this makes us special. And every day when you come to work uh, and my staff will tell you, they have worked I see that network. you're still working from office. You're in office today and Every time I've spoken to you, you've been in office. I haven't gone to office in more than 40 days, but I we are doing this conversation. You being in office, I being in home, and uh, so I. So yeah, so you know, so if you if you ask my staff, uh, they will tell you more. The the biggest smile that you get when they tell you that they are looking forward every morning to come to work. I think then this is the biggest achievement of our organization where every employee feels so involved in the work that it does not require a supervision on day to day from the junior most to the senior most. Okay, Avinash, uh, I'll ask you some personal questions. Who are people in the media industry and the news industry that you look up to? See, uh, and why? Uh, 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 some may be tall, so you may genuinely look <laughs> up to them, but beyond that. I'm, I'm no, see, uh, you know, I always tell you that um, you you were as good as your team is, uh, and you can be as experimental as your boss allows you to do. So. Okay, I have been extremely lucky uh, working with some of the best people in the industry. Uh, so all my bosses, I think I owe it to them that I learned so much from them that today, whatever I am. I always call it, I, I am, uh, my education is on the one side, formal education, but uh, you can never become uh, good in what you do unless you, what Tulsidas wrote that Nara Puram, you know, you cannot have knowledge only from one source. So you meet people, you, you, you grab something from them, you understand them and then you grow. So all my bosses, uh, I've learned a lot. I look up to everyone, including uh, Mr. Batra, uh, for for any intelligent conversation. Later conversation. Uh, we definitely, on a very serious note, we definitely laugh a lot. For you. <laughs> yeah. I think that's very important. Uh, and we have honest so, conversation. Yeah, so there are, I would not like to name any particular one, but yes, uh, all the people that I worked with, I certainly owe it to them. Uh, because I actually I'm, know you well, and I'm trying to be very formal with you. And at the start, before we get into life, who said, don't try to be so formal with me. But I want to say this to our viewers. You know, I practically know everybody in the media industry uh, that needs to be known and more in the advertising media communication. And I can tell you, and I'm not saying it because we're talking to Mr. Pandey or he's my friend, uh, which he is, uh, is that he's one of the most affable. And I spoke to two people yesterday and I have no qualms. I spoke to Neha Pant yesterday after like a long time because she tweeted an article she wrote on Sam Balsara for us 16 years back. And she was praising me. I speak to Atul Sharma and you know, I told you that question. He asked me one day, why is Avinash so successful? So I said to him, but he works very hard. He keeps up with friends. He helps everyone. But most of all, he is genuinely affable. He's very likable. So how are you as a boss? Tell us, how are you as a boss? How do you balance with being affable? and taking the right decision. How do you strike that balance? It's 12 o'clock. Yeah. See, uh, Anurag, uh, like all good leader, and thank you very much for saying such good things first, and uh, thank you to uh, colleagues, ex-colleagues of mine that you mentioned, just the name. I have to um, work with you at Indian Express. Indian Express, so, yeah. He had good things to say, and he asked yeah. me in the 
saying, what can I learn from Avinash? How can I be like Avinash? So that was the question. Uh, I see, I tell you something, uh, you know, uh, 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 Anurag, I'm, a, I'm also a practical person. So, you know, so uh, I'm very, I'm very uh, humbled at their kindness of these words. But, but finally, uh, as I told you, I'm as good as my, as my team and my boss. You know, so, so, so what is your extraordinary leadership style? Me. What is your leadership style? So you I'll tell you, there are three things that I focus on uh, when I work with my team. Number one is give them a direction. The second one is to give them enough support and infrastructure to move in that direction. And third one, constantly help them achieving those goals. I should be seen as enabler to them to achieve those goals rather than one who just takes reviews and says, no, you could not do it. Thank you very much. I also uh, uh, believe that uh, a good leader has to be empathetic, empathetic you know, to, to what's going around. So you do not, if you don't have empathy, you can never be a good leader. So uh, looking at bottom line and top line is obviously every, every organization head uh, has, a, has a task at hand to do so. But what is more important is that how you look at your employee uh, as somebody who can contribute in a very significant way that you yourself alone cannot do. And there is a goodness in everybody. And that's what the first principle is to explore that. Beautiful. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, there are dead wood everywhere. And so in my organization, and I can tell you, I have politely told several people uh, to, to part ways. And it's not that I have not done so. Uh, but even after parting ways, we remain good friends. And, and, and we still talk uh, almost a regular basis. So business, uh, doing business is very important to understand that as long as you are focusing on giving directions, managing those directions and giving infrastructure for people to work, people will uh, work for you at any given point of time. And if they fail, they will come and tell you, okay, look, I don't think so I fit here. I don't think so I can contribute here. And let me now move myself away from this so that the organization does not stop. I also give an example uh, to a lot of people about the herd uh, movement of the elephants. If you look at the elephant, uh, uh, they move in a, in a circle. The strongest member on the outside of the circle, the, the elder ones are in the middle and the children are in between. And they all move with a certain speed. When one of the member is not able to move with that speed, they try to pull that member away. And they, they, they push them. You must have seen those several videos in National Geographic. But the, at one point, when they realize that this particular member cannot move anymore, they leave him and the rest of the herd moves away on their course. That's what happens with the organization. We will support each other as colleagues to move with the speed that we desire. But if someone is not able to move that speed, then we'll have to let that go. And that's what happens. So at the end of the day, nobody feels bad because you know, at the end of the day, the speed of the organization, the speed of the company, what the common for most. Thank you, Anash, for sharing that. I I want to ask two, three questions, but I'll leave it till the end. There are people asking questions. There's Neera Ja asking two questions. Uh, and I will try and get, if there's some of them live, we'll try and get them on screen. Because anyone when Priyanka can get them. Neera Ja is asking, how's the distribution side of the broadcast business change? And the second question is, how secure are the jobs in media? in the medium term and long term future? First of all, let me tell you the pre-COVID way of doing business and post-COVID way of doing business would be very different. And how would it be different? Uh, uh, see, basic, basic uh, way of our communication and interaction has changed. So you cannot have same way of uh, of doing business as it was earlier. When when things are changing so fast in a world, it would be it, as you rightly uh, said some time back that it's a VUCA world. You cannot have a permanent solution that this is what I'm going to do three months from now. It is a it is a it is a situation where you have to be resilient. 
And I wrote to my employer that resilience is something which is adaptability personified. You have to be adaptable to constantly moving time and changes that is happening. As far as distribution is concerned, uh, uh, I, mean, I call it organic pivoting. Organic pivoting. That's right. So yeah. as, time, as things change, you adapt. And I was talking to Raj Naik and Sai Kumar the other day. They said the best person is who doesn't have a plan. They'll be successful because really they don't have a plan. It sounds, it sounds like you know oxymoronish that you'll be successful if you not a, have a plan. But for all, all, always you said have a plan. You know planning is the success to keep. And suddenly you're saying live in the day, do the best you can do today, and take every day as it comes. Now as coming comes, back yeah. to the distribution business. So distribution is the biggest cost uh, for the news broadcaster. And uh, 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 we were hoping that the, what TRAI recommended in NTO2 is uh, fixing of the price for the distribution. If that gets implemented, that will be there for the news organizations. Because if you look at the balance sheet of any news organization today, the largest cost is the distribution. It's not about content creation. Content creation is not a cost. Uh, and how the business will move from where it is to where it wants to go, you are looking at the world-class journalism unless you invest in the content. And that, nobody is left with any money after paying to distributors. So, uh, so uh, NPO2 has some right recommendation for, for the distribution. But uh, this, this industry will change uh, with, the, with, the, with the opening of the fiber capacity in the country. A cable, linear cable would not be the only source for consuming television. And I see these changes happening very fast. Uh, within a year's time, people will be consuming more through the, fi through the, through the fiber rather than through the linear cable. Uh, all kind of content, including news. And that's why I see those OTT who are well placed with the news plus entertainment content are, are, uh, are the ones who are going to have a larger share of pie than the normal OTT which does not have news. Avinash, uh, other, other media homes are decreasing their pricing. Of course, your viewership, as we said, has gone up from 200 to 300%. Uh, so you, they, you shouldn't decrease your yields. Because in media, once the yield goes up, it's very difficult for it. In your case, the viewership increased, so you have no reason to bring down the price. No, we are not, but, we are not but, decreasing but our price. We are holding on to our price and we are asking for premium. Uh, so you don't are all you channels see that are delivering more than for a GC, while, or sorry? at some stage if the economy doesn't recover in the next three to six months do you still see yourself holding prices see as i said because it's a uh, this this time requires resilience we don't know what's next we are only prepared for what we know as of now that there will be limited economic activity there would be restrictions on movements. Uh, there would be change in the consumption pattern. And if these are the changes happening, for example, in education sector, look at the, the kind of change that it is going to do. Sure. Uh, look at the consumption of uh, your habits of going watching watching movies and theaters, you know, going to theater and mall. It is going to have a significant change. Real estate will have significant change. Maybe you don't require, everybody is now looking at the fact that maybe you don't require so much of real estate for office. So things will change and the developing situation also saying anything with great degree of certainty would be a would be thing. Yeah. yeah. But we are certainly prepared. Uh, we are certainly prepared with all options on table. Sure. Thank you. And uh, I would bring on uh, Prenka, do we have uh, Mr. Tiwari and Mr. Mishra online or we don't have them? Uh, not yet, sir. I'll just no. call him and... Please just, just, just call them. Avinash, I want to ask you, if you had to make three predictions for the future about the media business, what would those be? That you can see. Some things you can see, some things, of course, are dynamic, depends on what are the... So, for example, we know that digital consumption is going to them. That's a, that's a given. You know, established media brands are seeing lots of viewership. Uh, 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 so these are given, but give us three things that we haven't looked at. See, the first change that will happen that uh, in the near term is that the the heavy set of production will go away. 
you'll have to work with far less you have to be more agile and maybe in our business for example a single person with mojo kit uh, is what will all be required to cover the story so uh, you're saying the reporter will be the cameraman the reporter will be the you know by the way this was already happening uh, globally uh, 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 organization like today, today we come out with technologies which can which can actually help the person do a two way interview like we are talking uh, through one mojo kit so uh, so obviously the heavy heaviness of the production will go away uh, which will also lead to reduction of costs that's right people would be a uh, lot of lot of different kind of content people would be looking at than what news channels are used to producing right now which is what is happening on the street is what we we are best at most of us because uh, uh, we have a world view which which will not be the same after this covid end so a lot of different quality of content and kind of content will surface in the mainstream media than it was earlier and third one is that the distribution platforms are going to radically change so sure. the and build on that explain that a little bit see the way you consume today television will not be the same again because an uncertain time creates high degree of anxiety a linear cable does not necessarily work in that space so for example if i am watching abp news on hotstar and i am watching something and i am interested in sumit avasthi's facebook live or something i immediately go on hotstar itself press the button and watch something else come back to the main story again that's how that's how people will be consuming television because the cost of the data and the bandwidth has gone down drastically and as the geo spreads uh, in india uh, it will reach to the rural india and that's where you'll see the tipping point in this business towards the ndc so and you will have a change in the distribution platforms thank you very much for uh, getting deeper into that now all is also tuned in he's asked me to ask you a question hypothetical question but if the revenues in news channels don't grow or stay where they are and it leads to a weakening of the news broadcaster ecosystem what are its you know the commercial weakening the revenue softening up what are the its implications for the ecosystem and for the country and for the society if at all it happens see i tell you uh, so you give to give me 2 minutes to explain this see the death of the local newspaper is the biggest dent to uh, to to for a free speech and and free market you know the local newspapers were the conscience keeper of 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 local communities they used to report if there is a violation by a builder the municipality is not building up the roads and etc etc and these mediums were largely supported by advertising largely means what 100% supported by advertising and advertising advertisers are not looking at good journalism advertisers are looking at eyeballs and if that eyeball has shifted somewhere else the newspaper started dying but the but in that space the casualty has been the right of of freedom a free right. a free market a free society no local news channels came to fill up that space in the broadcast sector now if the advertising does not come in that proportion the first thing that broadcaster has to do that that has to get go to the pay mode where people actually consume you by paying you so you have to free up some content which is which is for free of cost which you will not charge for and some content that you will charge for i think it's a, if the if the revenue model does not stay like this people who are in this business in the broadcast business who are not here for a good journalism for only for for looking at this as a as a business i think they are the first one who will be going out because this is not what they came for right if it becomes unsustainable a group like ours or many others in my in my in the members who are only in this business they have no other business right they will even become better because they'll be innovative they will be creating unique contents they may go pay for their certain content uh, through on digital platforms and over a period of time you will see a sharpening of the of the of the whole ecosystem where a few players would be there but producing a world class content for for all all section of people 
so uh, i don't think so going advertising revenue down will uh, will kill uh, a few of us uh, but it will certainly change the way we, we manufacture content we are, our our studios would be smaller our staff would be leaner uh, and we'll be using technology to distribute our content uh, to multiple people so that uh, advertisers can can benefit uh, those advertisers fantastic uh, mr pandey Uh, I think that granularity will help lots of. I just want another. Uh, uh, Tushar is asking, is it not an opportunity for news channels to get smaller advertiser with smaller budgets and and larger advertising pie? See, all the news channels do every day, every year the same job. Okay, we go to small towns, uh, talk to local ad, local manufacturers and 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 service providers. we create their ad films we run it on the channel last year alone at abp news network we we got 400 such uh, clients into advertising for the first time right you know right. so similarly all other news channels must have done it so uh, it is because we look at our job as serving the society uh, whether it is for the dissemination of news or allowing them to come into a business ecosystem so we our first focus is always go to a small talukas village towns and look at what they are doing and you will be surprised the level of their business the level of their uh, uh, you know innovations uh, curiosity and and they become big brand today a lot of big brands that you see in the marketplace today uh, who are also buying ipl and all that they were first uh, you know were brought into the system by the news channel news news channels fantastic You know, in fact, I was talking to a big advertiser. He's also a big advertiser on your network, and he said the only thing we two things we rely on is IPL and news. Now that IPL is not there, we will rely on news a lot more. We've held back the campaign because it was centered around Virat, and it was Virat local likes. And now we have to make a tweak in the commercial. So we'll wait till the festive season comes, and we'll hopefully utilize new channels a lot. So really, uh, he could. Some of the sentiments that you shared. I want to ask my two last questions and kind of wrap up. First question is, you know, is about the job losses in the media sector. And second is, when do you see the economy bouncing back? And both are in some way related. See, if you look at average growth of any country, uh, if let's say it is five percent or six percent or seven percent, you work for twelve months. You get five, six, seven percent growth. That means it's less than one month of work that you grow. For two months, you are in the lockdown. So forget about any growth. The economy is going to decline. It's yes. as simple mathematics will tell you. Okay. Uh, and definitely, there will be a huge depression uh, in the marketplace. But what I'm hopeful about India is that that. we are not uh, the contribution in our gdp of exports is very little the huge contribution come from domestic consumption and government expenditure so it's all inward and the day it slightly becomes better in terms of movement of goods and services uh, factory output and uh, people are able to go out and consume our economy will bounce back and i see that bouncing back no later than september no uh, later than september no later than september so september it's that, that's a very optimistic to, note uh, i am an optimistic person so i think that you know that's the way it would be <clears throat> but but things would not be the same ever again i can tell you until everybody in this world gets vaccinated or there is a clear cut medicine and because the virus never goes out goes away it stays so we all need to know how to protect ourselves uh and there will be different way of our conduct in the in the in the business and the society and that's what the change will determine how the economy is going to be it will never be the same again anurag that much i can tell you but we are likely to bounce back faster than many western organizations and uh, asian west of western countries and asian countries that i have to believe timeline i'm not sure but i believe what you say uh i want to end by asking you What are the top three things you will do? Moment. I mean, I know you go to office every day, but what are the top three things you do in September? Uh, you know, would you travel? Your job entails traveling to Bombay, 
going to wherever the ABB event, if there's an event in the state capital of Lucknow or event in the CM's constituency in Gorakhpur, you would travel. How would it change that? So what are the top three things you wish for uh, post-September? See, uh, first of all, uh, as an organization, we are committed to our investments. So we are waiting for this uh, cycle to subside and we'll move with our investments that we had planned. Just to tell our viewers, ABP News is moving into a very world-class, brand new, large office space, at least before the pre-COVID. And uh, uh, Mr. Pandey, will you still move into an office space? Uh, so as of now, uh, as I said, all options are on the table. But uh, we have not, we have not shelved any plan that we had planned before COVID so far. So uh, my first objective is to continue with the business plan as we had planned uh, before those investments. But I can tell you the business, what any business house is planned, there will be a massive change in the basic structure of those businesses because it is not the same way. For example, if, if I'm a production house and I'm producing a show where I invite 55 audience into the studio or hundred audience into the studio and do a show, do you think we'll be able to do those shows? May not. If it requires 55 people to work at a studio set, do you think we can produce? Maybe not. So the way we work will change. And as I said, that all good strategies work. If you know, as you move in, what all to make changes in. And that's the what- are, Predictability. Uh, that predictability has gone It's a very highly uncertain environment. But we are right now, as you asked for September, we are hoping that by September, if things start moving into the right direction, we will, uh, we will go ahead with our, those investments that we plan. So our, our one, ambition, our ambition is to- other two? So, you know, if you predict at this time on drug one, that would be, I think, a uh, uh, that, that big deal. But uh, yes, uh, but you one, really, I see you wear lots of fingers, uh, <laughs> uh, rings on your finger. I saw, I think I saw an emerald. So you clearly believe in astrology and all. So uh, no, 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 I believe in what my, I, I, I believe in what my mother says. So if my mother says we are this, I wear this. You know, uh, there are certain things that you don't argue about. So. So that's the way it is. So, but I'm, I'm, I'm. What I'm telling you is that that look, the travel would not be the same again. So that would be that would be the major consideration for doing our daily work. Uh, your office space would not be the same way designed as as it was designed earlier. Uh, your your number of people working at the workplace would not be the same number. So a lot of changes are going to happen. Uh, we are planning for all of that right now. By the way as to how we will, when, when things open up, how, how we will ask corporate staff to come to office, what will they do? Do we require them really in office every day of the week or every day of the month? All these considerations are on the table. But as far as the business is concerned, we'll continue with, we are, we are very hopeful about India. We believe in the strength of India. And I think we'll be able to bounce back very soon than most countries probably. Uh, and there is an opportunity for organization like ours who is into the business of Telling you the truth, uh, giving you the knowledge, giving you information, and so we'll continue well, to follow that. Mr. Bandey, I said last week, I want to ask the news channels focus a lot on what is not right so that it can be put into right. But I want to ask you, what do you think has the government and the Prime Minister done right in the last 40 days? Because, you know, it's also focus, good to focus on things that the government gets right and the Prime Minister gets right. So. What are the things you feel that the government has done right? I think, see, I'm very candid about it. If I think there is a Nobel Prize for fighting COVID that goes to any state uh, head, it should go to our Prime Minister. He has done incredible work, without doubt, uh, leading a team of 130 billion people, each of them thinking differently and making them agree to do something. Uh, please remember one thing, that the country came to stand still not by an order, but by his appeal that he stay at home first, which was the day one of Yanta curfew. Not a single person moved out of their house. And that kind of appeal I have seen, in, I'm a student of history, happened only in case of Mahatma Gandhi, where he said that Chauri Chara has happened, from tomorrow there is no hesitation, and the entire country stopped. 
the power of leader is not by the power in shining the constitution or given to you by the board the power of a leader is how people believe in you when you say something and that way i think uh, an amazing job our prime minister has done i would not totally agree we seriously you. we seriously need to look at now on economy uh, because uh, the longer we are logged in uh, the worse will uh, the longer time it will take for us to bounce back so there has to be some balance which needs to be done and i i'm sure uh, the prime minister and and, and government of india is thinking in this direction so i'm hopeful thank you. thank you on this positive note we wish you luck we wish the abp news network luck we wish all your colleagues luck we wish the news and the media industry of which all of us are part luck and we wish all our countrymen luck and we compliment the government of india and the prime minister for uh, doing a lot of things right uh, and hope uh, that uh, we are able to come out of the economic impacts of covid uh, i'm sure uh, at some stage again we'll have the opportunity to engage in a conversation in happier better times till then all the best god bless you thank you thank you thank you so much on ragan business world and exchange for media